Hello and welcome back to the channel. As many of you are aware, I'm sure the beta version of Football Manager 2023 has been out now for around two weeks. Full release of the game is next week. So it's probably a good time and about time I started my first save on this year's version of the game. And as some of you will know that saw the end of last year's save with Stour Bucharest, I am going to be managing Milan of Serie A. They obviously picked up their first league title in 11 years last season, winning Serie A for the first time since 2011. But our focus in this save is not going to be the league. It's going to be the Champions League, where Milan haven't won the, the trophy since 2007, when they beat this team here in the final. A very sore moment for me, as I'm sure you'll appreciate. But yeah, our, our job in this save is to get Milan their 8th Champions League slash European Cup title. So let's take a look at the squad we've got at our disposal and the tactic that we will be playing. So first off, the tactic that we're going to be playing is a 4-2-3-1 Gagan press. With two defensive midfielders, we're going to try and dominate the game pressing from the front and basically just overrunning our opponents. Uh, this tactic will be used for the majority of games. I have another tactic to use for games against teams we're more well matched with, but we'll get to that in a second. In fact, why wait? We'll get to that right now. Ignore the personnel. Um, it's obviously not going to be correct, but this is our, our backup formation, which is a 4-3-2-1. Uh, direct counter-attacking style, so basically just trying to get the teams on the break. Bit more defensive solidity with those the extra defensive midfielder in there. Uh, we've got two attacking centre midfielders, then the one man up front. Basically taking both of these tactics from Milan's real-life tactics so far this season. So the initial tactic that I showed you is the one they've been using most of the time. Um, maybe not with Gegenpress. Press. And then they've used this tactic against Juve, I believe, in the league. Uh, we've used both tactics in pre-season. They've gone pretty well. We had an unbeaten pre-season, which we'll get to in a little bit. But yeah, they're, they're the two tactics that we're going to be trying out with Milan for this this first part of the season at least, see how we get on. But we'll run through the players that we've got at the disposal now. So we have in goal, our number one keeper for the season is Mike Manian. He's a French national, a very solid goalkeeper, uh, 27 years old. He has been capped by the national side as well, formerly of Lille, ten, technically formerly of PSG, but never played for them. Uh, a very solid man in goal. At right back, we've got Davide Calabria. Uh, he's currently wanted by Spurs, so don't, don't know if he's going to be with us for the full season. But if not, we've got a, a more than suitable replacement, uh, which I'll show you in a second. Obviously, Calabria, very solid overall, really. His attributes are all pretty solid. Going to be playing as a, a defensive wing back, which is his favoured role uh, this season for us. The man who we would replace him with is Pierre Kalulu, if I can click on him. Uh Young Frenchman who is he's got very good potential and he's pretty decent already. So I don't think we're going to have too much concern if Calabria does leave us. In central defence, we've got former Chelsea centre back Englishman Fikayu Tomori as our young end of a young and old defensive partnership. He has excellent defensive attributes. His heading, marking, and tackling are very, very good. He's going to be playing as a ball playing defender on defend. His passing's decent enough for that, with his first touch being okay as well. Uh, a very quick central defender, which is, is very useful as well. Alongside him, in the, the old end of this partnership, is Simon Kier, the Danish national, the 33 year old Danish national, who's been at a whole host of European clubs. Still very good defensively. Very good passing as well. His first touch is not as good as Tamori's, but still okay for the role that he'll be playing. He's going to be playing as a ball-playing defender as well. And hopefully that's a bit of solidity in the back four. At left-back, our starting left-back will be Theo Hernandez. He will be playing as an attacking wing-back. Obviously, he's got a very, very good dribbling. His crossing isn't too shabby either, but his defensive attributes are, are decent as well. Marking a 12, tackling a 14, and then his physicals are just... Unreal, great stamina to help with the, the pressing that we're going to be doing and his pace is amazing as well. In the first of our two defensive midfield spots, we've got Ishmael Benesa. He's only 24 years old, the Algerian national, wanted by a whole host of clubs, including Chelsea, Bayern, Newcastle, Inter. And he doesn't want to sign a new contract with us. He wants to run down his current contract, which expires at the end of the 23-24 season. I did have him on the transfer list for this reason, for a little bit in the summer, but no one was coming in for him, so I just removed him from that. We'll 
continue to try and sign him to a new deal because he is a very, very good defensive midfielder. Playing as a deep line playmaker this season, his passing is great, excellent first touch as well. He's a he's he's, he's a decent technical defensive midfielder. And alongside him this season in a ball winning field role is Sandro Tonali, the 22 year old Italian defensive midfielder, very solid defensively. He can play in the deep line playmaker role as well if there's occasions where Benesa is going to be injured or just being rested for any reason. The passing of 15 is very good for Sandro Tonali. Um, overall, physicals decent as well. Plenty of room for growth with Amuni being 22 years old. So, decent option at defensive midfield. Our starting right winger for the season at the early stages of the season, and I'll get to why I say that in a second, is Junior Messias, the 31-year-old Brazilian. Very, very decent. Again, dribbling a 15 is a standout attribute of his. He's solid physically. Um, he is getting on a bit, which is why, come the end of the season, I'm hoping that we're going to have a different man in that role. Alexis Salamakas, the Belgian national, only 23 years old. A lot of room for him to grow, but looking very good already. Obviously, he's been capped by the Belgian side a handful of times and really want to try and get him bedded into being a first-team player by the end of the season. In a similar vein to Messias at right wing, we've got Brahim Diaz, who is, of course, a youngster, but he's on loan to us from Real Madrid. Uh, uh, he will be playing as an attacking centre midfielder. I believe as a shadow striker, if I remember rightly. Yes, he's a shadow striker on attack. Uh, a very good player. Again, dribbling first touch and technique are just beautiful, beautifully high. Um, but coming into the season again, it's not him that I want to be starting. It is this man, another Belgian national, Charles de Ketelaer. We are going to be the Belgian development team, it seems. He's he's very good. He's played well in the, the preseason friendlies that we've had. He looks very, very good. First touch again, standout technique as well. Dribbling is Dribbling and passing are both great as well. He's only 21, plenty of room for growth, and hopefully he can get bedded into the, the first team come the end of the season. Our first choice left winger is going to be Rafael Leao. Now, unfortunately, as you can see, he is injured. He's got a fractured lower arm. He's going to be out for between three to four weeks, so he'll miss a good chunk of our Champions League group stage. But he is such a good player. He's our best player, and that is why... I've splashed the cash on a new contract for him. So we had a transfer budget of £16 million. I had to adjust the budget down it so that we had only £6 million transfer budget just so that I could pay this man what he wanted to stay. Spurs were interested in signing him. Didn't want that to happen as he's, in my opinion, our best player. So I've spent £100,000 a week more than the previous highest earner was on. He's now on £180,000 a week. Won't be doing this for anyone else. Um, Rafael Leao I think is worth it we've got him until 2027 hopefully by that point we've won the Champions League and the save will be over but yeah he's just too good We, I can't wait for him to get back from injury to be honest he's a, he's a very creative player he's been involved in four goals in the four preseason friendlies and I'm sure he's going to be involved in even more goals this season and then up top Olivier Giroud, this is the position that I was most concerned about. Uh, however, Giroud has sort of eased my concerns a little bit. He's got two goals in two games in Serie A, and he's looked pretty good in preseason as well. The reason I was concerned is just because of his age, 35 years old. We've obviously got his Latin as well, he's 40. Um, but yeah, Giroud seems okay. But we've all also got uh, a bit of a, a hero of mine in Lord Divock Origi. He has played. A few times um, for us, only one start in preseason, but he managed three goals in four appearances overall. And he's a very, very decent player. I know from him playing at Liverpool, he can play in the big games. Um, he scored in the big games, very important goals against Barcelona, Spurs, handful of other sides. Uh, Everton, I remember that goal, the dodgy one, when he hit the crossbar and then he just headed it in. Bit of an easy one, but still, he, he looks like a decent player. He's going to be able to get us goals when Giroud doesn't. Hopefully, I uh, have got a scout looking for uh, another striker, but obviously we don't have transfer budget, so that's proving a bit difficult. Other standout players that we've got, we've got Pierre Kalulu, who's uh, with the young right back. I think I showed you him literally about 10 minutes ago, so I don't know why I've shown you him again. But yeah, Pierre Kalulu, very decent French youth right back. Matteo Gabbia, he'll be playing a few times as well for us, no doubt, with uh, in a rotation role as a ball playing defender whenever Tamori or Simon Kier need a bit of a break. Fode Balotore will also be a backup left back. Not as young as the others, but still a decent option as a backup in that role. 
Uh, Salamakas have shown you to Catalea again shown you Ante Rebic will be playing at left wing whilst Rafael Leao is out injured um, a experienced international who has very very decent attributes now I have mentioned transfer budget and we have spent some of our transfer budget we signed uh, a youngster 21 year old Icelandic national Thoria Johan Helgeson from Lecce for 3.3 million pounds he is one for the future and basically assigned him because one of our one of our board cultures is to sign players under the age of 21 for the future and under the age of 22 for the first team so the signing of Helgeson obviously meets those uh cultures from the board and while we're on this screen this is our objectives from the board for the season so they want us to work within the wage budget which is obvious be competitive in the Champions League challenge for the Serie A title challenge for the Coppa Italia and be competitive in the Super Coppa which I think are all understandable and hopefully achievable goals but new for this year's game we also have supporter culture and supporter expectations so a bit different from the board they want us to sign high reputation players something which we're going to struggle with if we're wanting to appease the board in getting under 22 and under 21 players unless we somehow come into lots of money and can afford to sign the best young players in the world more likely to happen we've got the supporter expectations of becoming the most reputable team in both Europe and Italy, obviously finishing above rivals Inter in the league and winning Serie A. So they don't ask for much, the supporters, but it is going to be interesting to see how much of an effect uh, the supporters' expectations, meeting the supporters' expectations has in how the board feel about you in general in the game this year. Another new thing is this, they have like a breakdown of the, the supporter profile. So you can see we've got a small hardcore fan base and the, the majority of fans are, are core. So they'll be going to every game, um, the average average football fan. It's also got our social media following, season ticket holders, waiting list. It's a big waiting list. And uh, amongst a plethora of other things, just look, look at it yourself. And yeah, new screen. Now you may have noticed that we are into August. Um, there's a reason for that, and this is the second time I'm recording this video because I had issues the first time. So the idea was to bring you the Champions League draw. However, I did that in the first attempt at recording this. So we don't have the Champions League draw for you, but I can show you the, the, the teams that were drawn in the groups, which is arguably just as good because the, the Champions League draw took forever to happen. So we'll just go through the groups. You can see Group A is... a uh, it's a pretty open group, to be honest. Atletico, Frankfurt, Marseille and Benfica. Group B is a, a bit of a group of death. Poor Copenhagen are going to struggle against those sides. Then you've got us in Group C with a, a difficult one, I would say. On paper, we should be beating Leverkusen and Monaco, but you never know. And then Chelsea, obviously, are toughest opponents in that group. Group D, Celtic have got a tough time in there with PSG, Juve and Salzburg. Uh, group E, our national, our fellow Italian side, Napoli. I've got a, a tough one with Sevilla and Bayern in there. Tottenham have got a very easy group with Porto, Shakhtar and Red Star. Real have got another easy group. And Liverpool have got a, a bit of a, a challenge, but they should really be qualifying from that one. So as we are into August, we have played a few games. Pre-season, we'll kick off with. We started with a, a inter-squad friendly against our second eleven. We were losing 2-0. We managed to pull it back to 2-2. Not the best of starts. Divock Origi scoring twice for our second eleven. We then faced Juve. At a neutral ground and 1-1-0 one, one, thanks to an Olivia Giroud penalty very early on. Literally, after this penalty went in, it was all Juve, so we were very lucky to get away with a 1-0 win. We beat Augsburg handsomely 3-1, Empoli even better 5-1, and then narrowly won against Napoli thanks to Olivia Giroud 1-0. Then we opened the season against Juve. We opened the scoring with Giroud again, but they quickly bounced back to equalise with Lavic and then go on to get a winner thanks to Bremer. So not the greatest start to the season, but we bounced back from that with a 4-0 defeat over, or a 4-0 victory for us, I should say, over Verona, Giroud, Diaz, Tamori and Di Ketelea all getting on the score sheet. In the coming league games, we've got Napoli and Monza, but obviously because this save is focusing on the Champions League, I'm mainly going to bring you Champions League games in these episodes if we get to cup, a cup final or we're going to win the league i'll bring you the whatever game it is that's going to win us the league but the main focus is going to be the champions league so with that in mind next episode as this is just an introductory episode we are going to have our first two champions league games away from home against monaco 
and at home against Bayer Leverkusen, two of the, the games we should be winning in the group. The only, as I said, the only side that we should be struggling against really is Chelsea, and we do have them back-to-back -back in October, uh, which will be fun, I am sure. But yeah, that is it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel to get all my content when it comes out, hit the notification bell to stay notified, and I'll see you next time.